Let's hear these words. John 18, 33 to 37. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Or is that, is that your own idea, Jesus asked? Or did others talk to you about me? I am a Jew, Pilate replied. No, am I a Jew, Pilate cried. And your own people, your chief priests, handed you over to me. What is it that you've done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom is from another place. You are a king, then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You say that I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? Said Pilate. When this was said, he went out to the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for charge against him, but it's your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of Passover. Do you want me to release, quote, the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. I went a little past 38. That was all, all the way to four. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time that we can be in your house. And I pray, God, as we look at Christ the King Sunday, and we look at this scripture, I pray, Lord, as we look at this scripture, that we can come closer to you and closer to your truth. Uh, I ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look, i just going to tell you, I got a text message this morning from a friend of mine who pastors a church, and he always texts me around 5.45 on Sunday morning. Don't worry, it's to make sure we're both ready. And this text said, what is truth? I said, that sounds familiar. He said, yes, it's in the reading today that we talked about. And I said, well, truth? Truth anymore in America is whatever we decide we want it to be. He said, unfortunately, that is probably what truth is as we see it. I always uh, always refer back to that statement, have it your way, right? That one uh, burger joint uses, have it your way. And, and that's sort of the way we want to do in church. But also we go back to even the time when Jesus was standing on the platform uh, right during the Passion. Uh, as he was going to passionately give up his life for us, he's standing in front of Pilate. And Pilate now is asking him, are you the king? Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus, right then, at that point, if he would have stated, yes, I am the king of the Jews. Yes, I am the king of this world. He could have had all the power in the world. Remember, Satan tempted Jesus. Satan, in uh, Matthew 4, gave those three temptations to Jesus, right? Jesus was hungry, he'd been fasting. Clash these stones together, turn them into bread. You'll be satisfied. Jesus replied, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word from the mouth of God. Jesus then uh, was tempted that if he, I don't have it right in front of me, the three orders, but he was then tempted that if he climbed up on top of a mountain, on top of everything, he was able to see everything. If he just bowed down to me, Satan asked Jesus to bow to him, I'll give you all this stuff. Jesus refused. Satan also wanted Jesus to go up and jump off the top of, I believe it was a temple, but he wanted him to jump. And uh, I've always heard it called, Jesus was asked to pull an evil Knievel, for those of you that were around in the 70s, right? Anybody my age and younger may not know what that means. So, <laughs> If you don't know what that means, ask someone next to you that's over 40 years old, they'll remind you of what this guy was. But Jesus was asked to pull a daredevil stunt. And in doing so, uh, prove God's power, and Jesus said, not to test the Lord your God. So as we look here, Jesus, before he started his public ministry, Jesus went out in the wilderness to be with God's creation. As Jesus went out in the wilderness to be with God's creation, Jesus was in the wilderness, and the tempter, Satan, showed up. 
and tried to tangle Jesus up before he started his three-year public ministry to change the world. So now at the end, there will be no reason we shouldn't question why Pilate was asking Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? At that moment, see, Pilate was asking, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus could have just as easily said, well, yes, I am. But Jesus came to do the will of the Father. He came to do the will of the Father to make sure that all humanity could be saved by turning to him. Jesus asked Pilate, is that your idea? Or did others talk to you about me? Jesus, in his great philosophy and wisdom, of course, divine God wisdom, is asking, is that your own idea? Or did others talk to you about me? You realize in verse 34 what Jesus is doing to Pilate is, he's asking Pilate, he's calling Pilate out more or less. Do you have a personal relationship with me? Or did you hear about me from somebody else? Did somebody else tell you about the love of the Father through me? Or did you hear of it? See, Pilate wasn't asking like Nicodemus. Remember, Nicodemus was asking, he was seeking and searching for answers. And Nicodemus, as he was searching and seeking for answers in John chapter 3, Jesus gave him uh, an answer that all of us know, right? Help me out with it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. As we look at the text, we see that Nicodemus was searching and seeking for God's uh, Son, for God's answer, seeing there was something special for Jesus. Pilate was not searching and seeking in the same way. Pilate more or less says, am I one of your people? Your own people hand you over. What is it really you've done? My kingdom's not of this world. See, if my servants were, if it were, my servants would fight. But the kingdom's from another place. You're a king then, said Pilate. See, in the Bible, in the text, king is lowercase k, where Pilate replies. Pilate was referring to worldly kingdom, not kingdom of God, king. See, there's the visible church and the invisible church. And Jesus was a king in something invisible uh, to those who were unsaved, to those who don't believe. See, Jesus still today is being asked, are you the son of God? You think Jesus is the king of kings. You still hear it today. As we look at the text, Jesus answered, you say I'm a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came in the world is to testify the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. The Bible teaches, you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free in John 8. As we look and see the truth of God, the love of God through Jesus, in Pilate now again says, what is truth? With this, he went out again to the Jews and there said, I find no basis to charge him. So Pilate, though he wasn't really caring about knowing Jesus in a great personal way, also couldn't find anything wrong with Jesus. As Pilate went out and, and Pilate uh, uh, finds no charge, what happens? Well, let's release Barabbas. No, we don't. Or let, no, we don't want you to release Jesus. We want Barabbas. Barabbas, a warrior, a fighter, a one who had uh, uh, desire for turning over worldly kingdoms and, and, and fighting. And Barabbas was released while the Lord, we know what it teaches in the text, while the Lord Jesus had been crowned with a crown of thorns, beat down into his head, bleeding, he watched Barabbas be released, and everyone cheered. I don't know about you, but if I close my eyes for a minute, and if I put myself there in Jesus' shoes, I would be pretty, I would be pretty hard-pressed not to say, Father, it's not worth it. Look. 
I've been, if I was in Jesus' shoes, see, if any of us were in Jesus' shoes, we'd say, Lord, really? I don't know. See, there was something about Jesus through the divine creation. See, he was there with the Father during creation. And the Bible teaches in Genesis 1 and 26 and 7 that then we made mankind in our own image. In the image of God, they were created male and female. And we see there that God's image was created into us. God made us like him. A spirit that desires to be in relationship. A spirit that desires to be in a healthy connection with others. A spirit that needs a savior. A spirit that needs connection to the creator. As we look in this text and we see that, we see how God's love through his creation got messed up. I spent some time with an Amish friend of mine this week, and it's always interesting spending time with my Amish friend because, well, look, the first thing that's interesting is the way he makes coffee. I don't want to just break into the Amish community on you, but I'll give you this much. You take this buddy of mine, a Wawa, and cut him loose with a dollar five and see what he does. He put in like four kinds of coffee, marshmallows, cream, sugar, and I said, is that a traditional cup of Amish coffee? He said, no, my, aunt, my friends call it slop. <laughs> slop is what you feed to pigs. Anyway, but he loved it. Best slop you'll ever have. Put in more sugar, more cinnamon, anyway. Then after he got all amped up on sugar and caffeine, and we went out to, to do this little uh, needed project in the community, uh, at that point, he says to me, he says, you know, I was thinking about creation. It's funny, I'm thinking about creation too. He said, many of us don't believe in the story of creation. Therefore, if you don't believe in the story of creation, how can you believe in the fall of humanity? How can you believe that humanity messed something up? And if you can't believe in creation and the fall of humanity by eating the forbidden fruit by Adam and Eve, then how can you believe in the need to have a savior born on that one starry night, as you say? How would the need from one to two to where you are now three be connected? See, we have to take God as word and believe that God created. And why I think it's so great for these uh, four or five young ones that were up here today and younger one. Uh, why it's so great that who created heavens and the earth? I've never met some of these young ones face to face. And yet I can ask them in front of all of you. And they said, God, how is it as we get older that somehow we talk ourselves out of God? We talk ourselves out of God created because we got tangled up in a science channel and different things that tell us, well, no, that's probably not possible because now we've come to this age of enlightenment and we've got science that teaches, no, that God didn't do it. And, and it was a star hit another star and exploded and this did And next thing you know, we're so intrigued with this fancy talk that we can't have faith as children. Matthew 18, verse 2 teaches, Jesus brought a child up to his lap and he said, you have to have faith like this child to enter the kingdom of God. I don't believe that we need to act childish. And, and, and I know it's fun sometimes to have fun, right? But I don't believe we need to, you know, like, look, I don't need y'all making like a spitball and throwing it at the preacher right now to be childlike, okay? But what I'm saying is this, we don't, we need to have faith, simplistic faith, that we're not simple, but we can take God, that God, you created the heavens and the earth, then you created humankind, man and woman, you made it, we broke it. Lord, you sent Jesus to fix it. Respond to Jesus as king of kings. Receive him into your heart, and your, your life is secure. Your life is changed. 
Your life has now entered into this place where you'll see this new Jerusalem one day. The new Jerusalem, Jesus is the king of kings. It's not of this world. And we, we begin to see things from a different way we receive Jesus into our lives. See, we begin to see things in a way that are going to be much different. As we're looking at the text today, as we're thinking of the king of kings, we need to realize that Jesus Christ is the king of kings. There is one king of this world. He'd fallen from the sky. He rebelled against the Lord. We can see it in Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah 14, right around there. You can see where, oh, mighty one, have fallen from the angels. The fallen angel that we know as Lucifer, that we know as Satan. He's the king of this world. And he will try to do anything to entrap you, tangle you up, pull you down, get you messed up. Get you away from the truth. The truth that Jesus Christ is God's son. That he loves every one of us. That he wants that relationship with us. He yearns. He desires that God and his son, the Holy Spirit, they are doing everything they can to get you to turn back to God. And somehow Satan uses the things of this world to pull us away from God. My friends, look. Mark Twain quote, I, I, I thought it was Ben Franklin, but I checked it out, I was wrong. Mark Twain quote, find work that you enjoy and you'll never work another day. The work you enjoy will be a way that you can bring God into the setting where you are in this world. As I share that this week with a lot of people, I want us to realize that God puts us in places to share his hope and his love. My friends, God does this because God loves us. God wants to use us, not in a use way, but in a useful way to share his hope, to share his love. I, I know we got this Hallmark thing going and they got good movies. I've been watching them all. Thanks for the schedule. They're on the refrigerator. I watched a four-minute commercial for Hallmark last night, sharing all this love, all this hope. And I thought, Hallmark's got it. Why can't we have a church moment and realize it's about the love, the hope, the hope that God sent for humanity. And that all of us can turn to this King of Kings and we can focus on the King of Kings is the God of gods. The one who created the heavens and the earth. The one who created the humankind and an image just like him, the one who cares and loves for us and wants and desires that relationship with us in a strong way. And that even though Pilate wanted to let him go, the people wanted to nail him to the tree. So Pilate give in what the people wanted. And Pilate, as he give in, we know Jesus took upon a cross that was of epic proportion because all of our sins was on that cross. The sins of past, the sins of present, and sins you confess and ask to be forgiven in future through Christ. Carried that cross up on the hill, and the king of kings was put a high place on the mount. He was put a high place on the mount to be nailed to the tree with common sinners. One of which who turned to Jesus and said, you are innocent. We deserve our death. Jesus said to the man on the other side. Surely you'll be with me today in paradise. It's never too late until it's too late. We can always turn our lives back to Jesus and don't ever think for a minute. It's a worldly thought that certain people in your families, certain people in your neighborhoods, certain people that, that, that maybe you think there's no hope for. Don't ever think for a minute that Jesus Christ can't reach them. Pray for them. Pray that God will use you. Offer some words of encouragement. My brothers and sisters, there's no reason that everybody can't make it into heaven if everybody who believed would invite others to Jesus. I'm not even talking about inviting them to your church. I'm talking about inviting them to know the king of kings. God will get them where they need to be. Pick the phone up this week. Call one person. Pray with them on the phone. 
Call one person you've never talked to before. Tell them the King of Kings, the Lord Jesus, the one who died for our sins, the one who loves you. We're preparing to celebrate his birth soon. I just wanted to call to say, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your hope that comes through Jesus and your hope that comes by way of the cross, God. We thank you, Lord, and ask as we're here, that, Lord, that you would help each of us to come into your um, place of peace through trust in Jesus, repenting of sins. But God, you take us further and in our trust of you that we can turn to you, Lord. We can turn and ask someone, do you believe that Jesus loves you? God, we pray that, I pray for each person here, whether a visitor of this church, whether a long, long time member, God, that you'll let us call somebody we've never talked to about Jesus and just talk. In Jesus' name we pray, the King of Kings, amen.